Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you a workflow that I use at work at Sentry, uh, and I've also used this at previous jobs, to only deal with my branches in a Git repository. Now, sometimes you might be in a situation where hundreds of people are working on a repository. For instance, if we clone down Sentry's open source repository, the primary one that uh, development gets done in, Git Sentry, Sentry. Um, yeah, you might be working at a place where everyone works in a single repository, and so everyone is going to be creating their branches, and sometimes it's going to be really hard to keep track of what branches are yours, what branches are other people's, and uh, you're also going to spend a whole bunch of time with git fetch, pulling down everyone else's branches, and sometimes if people you know name branches poorly, it'll break on your system, and all sorts of other stuff. So I usually find it best to only look at the upstream primary branch and my branches. Uh, now that's not the default behavior. So if you do git branch dash r here, you'll see that there are, you know, hundreds, hundreds, yeah, hundreds of other branches. And I really only care about the ones that are mine. And I don't want to have to do grep acidly every time I'm dealing with this. And if I do git fetch, this is actually going to pull down. You'll notice it takes a little, little, little while because it's actually trying to update every single one of these branches. Now I don't have time for that. I'd like to just use my branches. So I'm going to show you a little workflow that I do to make that work better. I've actually documented this on a wiki page. I will try and remember to link this in the description, um, but I'm going to show you the steps to set everything up. The basics of this is it's going to set this branch fetch option here to a specific value that's only going to fetch the upstream branch and branches that have a particular name. Now this is going to force you into a particular naming convention, uh, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> Okay, so let's start by following these steps. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to fetch initially just to make sure that we're up to date. We, of course, didn't have to do this because we were already up to date. We just cloned the repo. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find what the upstream branch name is. Uh, now, this is meant to be a script that you can just copy and paste this whole thing, but I want to go through it step by step to show you what each of the commands are. So this one is going to show us what our current upstream branch name is called. In this repo, it's called master. In my repository, it's called main. Um, this is just a little command to show you the reference for origin head and then cut out the origin name at the beginning. So get our master branch name. We'll use that later. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to reset the origin.fetch setting to that branch. And we are going to substitute in main here, or, or sorry, master in here, because that is what this branch is called. Uh, so now what we've done is we've changed it so it only is going to fetch master. Of course, we don't want to stop here because that's not super useful. If we look at that config again, you'll see it now only fetches master. So if I do get fetch, it'll be a little bit faster. Uh, well, probably not noticeably faster. But if you do, what is it? Get verbose equals one. Uh, <laughs> is it get curl? I don't remember the debug setting. Anyway, there's some debug setting where you can show you exactly what it's trying to fetch, but right now it will only fetch the master branch. So it'll ignore any other pushes to other branches and just fetch from this branch. But that's not what we want. We want to also fetch our branches. So we need to do this next setting here um, where we are going to add a fetch option and it's only going to fetch branches that are prefixed with our username and a dash. So this is kind of like a little wildcard pattern there. We paste that in here. Now we look at that config again. You'll see that it's going to fetch master and it's going to fetch acetilly dash star. Now, if your username doesn't match your GitHub username or you want to pick a different prefix, that's fine too. I usually like to use my username and so that's why I've set it up this way. Um, so now if I do get fetch, it will look at branches that start with acetilly dash or it'll look at master and it won't look at anything else. Uh, but we haven't cleaned up everything else that's been cloned locally. Get keep still keeps track of these and no amount of garbage collection or pruning will get rid of those. So we have to manually make sure that these are gone. And that's what this last step does here. So get for each ref, this is going to print out each of the references. So you can see this is all of the things that Git knows about locally. There's a whole bunch of tags, there's a whole bunch of branches, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we want to get rid of all the ones that are not the ones we care about. So we are going to, uh, I'll just show you what each step of the pipe does here. Oops, each century. Uh, so this is now filtering down to just the ref names. It doesn't care about this part, this part. We just want this part. Uh, then we are going to grep out anything uh, that is not a, or sorry, yeah, we're gonna grep out anything that's 
not a head, not a, uh, or not a local branch, which is what this is, or anything that's uh, on the remote that is not head, not master, or not our username. So we're gonna do this part here, next part of our uh, thing here. Uh, we have to manually substitute this in since we didn't do that above. So now we just have a list of things that we are going to delete locally. You'd probably also want to filter out tags too, because you probably don't care to delete your local tags. It's not a huge deal there. Uh, but these are all the things that we don't want to track anymore. Uh, and then we are going to do the last part of our pipeline. Uh, Xargs dash one, get update ref dash D. Dash D is delete those references. So if we type this in here, um, it will run for a little bit. And now if we do get branch dash R, you'll see that it only lists my branches and master. And that's the state that we wanted it in. So we'll do get fetch. This should actually pull down the tags because we accidentally deleted those. So I should probably update these, this setting to also filter out ref slash tags uh, that way. We don't uh, delete those. What failed? Uh, update ref. Oh, no run if empty. <laughs> so otherwise it'll run it once with no option. Um, but yeah, you, you may want to put refs tags in here as well. But it doesn't super matter because Git will bring them back. But it won't bring back your other branches. So if you add new ones or remove them, you'll have your branches and only your branches here. Now, sometimes with this workflow, you do want to check out some other person's branch. And so you will have to do a special set of instructions for that. Let me show you what that is. Let me just grab someone's branch, such as this one that was updated four hours ago. I'm going to copy that branch name. We're going to explicitly fetch that from origin. We'll do get fetch origin that branch name. That will pull just one into fetch head. And we'll do get checkout fetch head dash b that branch name. And so that's how you can uh, check out a particular individual's branch without having to, you know, pull it into get branch dash r and without, you know, sort of messing up your local flow here. So that just to show that again, get fetch origin and then the branch name. And then you'll have to check it out via fetch head. And that's the workflow that I use to not deal with everyone else's branches. <laughs> It seems to save me a bunch of time, and so maybe it'll save you some time as well. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.